In this video, I'm gonna show you how to replace the driver side catalytic converter exhaust pipe. This is the one that comes off of the manifold and leads into the crossover pipe going back towards the muffler. We're working on this 5.4 liter Ford F-150, so let's get started. Underneath the truck, as you can see, the driver and passenger side pipes meet right here. We have to disconnect that. And just so you know, you're most likely going to need a new clamp for this area because this one is in really poor condition. Most likely I'm going to have to cut it off. Let's get the O2 sensors disconnected. I'm gonna start with the driver's side downstream O2 sensor, follow the wire and you'll see the connector all the way up there. It's that green connector and to unplug it, if you just reach for the harness, there's gonna be a tab on the uh, front side of it. Squeeze that tab and pull the connector out. Might be a little stuck in here from sand buildup over time. There we go. Shake all that sand out of there. Let's get this resecured. There we go. All right. Now we can move on, follow it, and unclip it from this retainer. Free up the wire. And now let's remove it off of the pipe. To do this, you may need to apply some heat. We'll see if that's the case, hopefully not. But the reason I disconnected it first is so that once we break it free, then it can spin, we can continue removing it without twisting up that wire so we can reuse the sensor. You can take this off with several different tools. I recommend one of these crow's foot oxygen sensor sockets. They are the best for gripping on and providing you with enough space to work. You can use a regular tubular oxygen sensor socket. You could even use a wrench. 22 millimeter is what fits here. But like I said, this is more likely to get a, a nice tight grip on it. Make sure that this sits perfectly on this O2 sensor. And now let's try to break it free. Okay, so I'm gonna pull this socket off and you can either use an induction heater or a little torch. I'm gonna use a little torch and I'm going to heat up the base of it where it threads into the pipe right here. I wanna expand these threads. I don't wanna damage the sensor. I'm gonna apply heat right here. Hopefully that'll get it out. all the way out at this point. I don't like to soak these with rust penetrant because I don't want the rust penetrant to get down into the sensor part. So usually heat is your best bet when it comes to oxygen sensors. There it is. Drop this down. I'm gonna get my socket off of here and then we'll take the upstream out. If you follow the pipe up, you'll see the upstream O2 sensor. And if you follow it, Next to the green one that we disconnected earlier for the downstream, you'll see the black one, which is for the upstream. Pop this out of its retainer so you can hold it a little bit better. And the connector, the lock for the connector is actually on the back side of it over here. Press the tab, pop this out, and then just unhook the wire from all of its retainers. Just like that, and pull it out. With the wire set aside, Let's get our O2 sensor socket on the sensor and see what happens. Hopefully we don't have to use heat for this one. Make sure that's fully seated like that. <clears throat> Looks like we're gonna have to heat this one up as well. You don't wanna force it too much. If it doesn't go and you feel that it's stripping out the cutout here, don't continue because then you're in for more trouble. Oh. Oh, never mind. I got it. Broke it free. Get your socket off. Remove the sensor. There you go. Now back to the driver's side. Let's unbolt the pipe off of the manifold. You have one bolt. Well, it's actually a nut. Should be a 15 millimeter. Uh, there's one on each side. Might not be a 15 millimeter anymore because it's rusty 
and uh, I also recommend using heat for these if they don't come off easily. Rust penetrant can help, but a lot of times with exhaust, heat is the way to go. Okay, that's 15 and it's way too loose, so let's go down to a 14. 14 seems to fit a little bit better. Might have to downsize even more to a 13, but we'll see. This one is in a lot worse condition, so I'm going to hammer a 13 millimeter on there. Let's try a half inch socket, which is just slightly smaller than a 13. Okay. Always a good idea to have new hardware when you do exhaust work. Oftentimes this is what you end up with. Carefully pry this down. Should separate. Alright, it's not gonna come down very far though, because it's obviously still bolted onto the rest of the pipe, but it does separate off the manifold. That's what we want. So let's move on and disconnect it from the crossover pipe. Over here, there is absolutely nothing left for me to salvage on this crossover pipe, so I'm just going to cut it and then uh, pry it, basically pry it open, remove it, and replace it. Now you're gonna wanna take a rubber mallet, tap this exhaust pipe that way to hopefully break it free out of here. Okay, I got it pretty much where it needs to be. Oh, there we go, that just popped out and it's falling off the manifold, that's perfect. You can remove the driver's side catalytic converter. Now let's take the driver's side pipe, bring it up on the manifold and slide it into this one. You can let it rest here at this point. Let's get the mounting nuts for the manifold side. At this point, you just wanna move the pipe around until it fits. If for some reason it doesn't wanna go over the manifold, pull down on the back side of it, this will give you a little extra slack. Once you get it to line up, the flange should basically automatically line up as well. So start the two mounting nuts and start the other one as well. And let's tighten these up. I'm gonna go back and forth on these so they can seat properly. It's important that this flange sits evenly so that you don't get exhaust leaks. Exhaust leaks up here are not good and uh, a safety concern. So. Get these nice and snug. There we go. All right. The torque for these two is 30 foot pounds. And two. Now over here, I will need a new clamp because, well, not only do I have a new pipe, but even if you were reusing the old one. Well, I guess if your old clamp is good, you could reuse it, but most likely the clamp is gonna be bad, so you have to take that off and install a new universal clamp. You'll need a two and three quarter inch clamp. Start this on. There we go. And put on the two mounting nuts for the clamp. Make sure it's positioned to where it's basically halfway into this pipe and uh, not all the way at the end here. And I like to place it so that it's facing, well, ideally I would face it either up or backwards. In this case, backwards I can't because of this and upwards I can't because of the shield. So I'm gonna face it forward. Anywhere where it's not facing down is good because facing down means it can get caught onto things as you're driving. Tighten these up and uh, as you do, make sure it's still positioned properly. For me, these are 14 millimeter in size. Of course, for you, that could be different depending on what clamp you have. These are just universal clamps. Now I know I'm closer to the end of this pipe than 
I am to the end of the flare here. However, I did notice that this doesn't go in all the way and I'm doing this on purpose because this pipe ends somewhere about here, not all the way at the end. So I wanna make sure that I'm actually squeezing down on it, not on nothing. Try to put equal pressure between the two sides. And as you tighten it down, you'll see that the pipe starts to squeeze. That's the goal here. You want it to crush down. You want this one to crush down onto this one and seal up that way. All right, let's get some more, more leverage here. Bigger wrench. All right, that's nice and tight. Now let's get the downstream O2 sensor in on the driver's side, clean up the threads if necessary, but definitely apply some anti-seize. I applied some copper anti-seize, doesn't matter what kind it is, but you wanna make sure you don't get it on the sensor part, just on the threads. This will allow it to hopefully not seize on here in the future. There we go, that's bottomed out nicely. Let's grab a 22 millimeter wrench, or you can use the oxygen sensor socket, whatever you prefer. But when it comes to tightening, it doesn't have to be crazy tight. It just has to get nice and snug in here. There we go. That's all I'm gonna do. Let's get the upstream in and then we'll plug them both in. And the upstream, same thing, apply some anti-seize. Make sure the wire doesn't get too twisted here. All right. Let's get the O2 sensor socket over. On this one, it's a little more difficult to use the wrench. Make sure that's nice and tight. Oh, make sure the O2 sensor socket doesn't fall off. Okay, that's snug, perfect. Take this off of here. And now let's plug them both in. Green with green and black with black. Make sure the wires are routed where they were before. Make sure they click and secure them. That one was a very silent click, but it did click. Those are both plugged in. Now get in the truck, start it up. And listen for exhaust leaks, there shouldn't be any. If there are any, well, you should fix them. When only the best will do, demand TRQ. The only company that lets you view before you do. TRQ is committed to offering the highest quality aftermarket auto parts that are engineered for peace of mind. Thanks for using and viewing with TRQ.